Hello, I'm Wendy. Today we're looking at some watercolour techniques. It's a step-by-step -step tutorial of a riverbank painting. So let's start off by looking at some of the techniques we're going to cover. We're going to cover the um, more the purpley distant hills that you can see there behind the trees. We're going to do a very light background. The trees are going to be put on with a dry brush mainly and then there's going to be some rigor work. There's going to be a bit of texture work for the river bank as you can see there and then we're going to have a look at um, the water done very simply um, just the purpley reflection in the water and we're going to pull out some ripples and then further down we're going to mask out some rocks and in the foreground there to bring the whole picture forwards we're going to have these rocks painted again very simply with a little bit of foliage on them. So there's quite a lot to cover in about 20 minutes. Um, as usual the aim of this tutorial is not for you to copy it necessarily exactly. I am giving you step-by-step -step instructions but some of the techniques I feel would lend themselves very well to your own paintings of riverbanks, simple scenes of trees and a field. So put these techniques to good use in your own painting and don't feel you've got to necessarily copy this exactly as it is. If I was to do it again I wouldn't do it exactly as it is but um, as I said try and use the techniques and I do hope it helps you. I started off with a simple drawing. You can download this drawing, it's available as a link in the description box below. I'm using Saunders Waterford paper for this one. Bockingford is fine. I usually use Bockingford actually, but um, Saunders Waterford this time. And I'm using a very soft 2B pencil for the drawing so that um, I can rub out the lines at the end of the painting. The distant trees are painted with a mix of ultramarine and light red. Sometimes they add a touch of burnt sienna to that mix as well. I painted the distant trees using the wet in wet technique. So first of all I damp the paper and I'm using a very very dilute burnt sienna and taking that um, wash down to that first line there at the edge of the distant field. I have this fairly stiff mix of the purpley colour made and I'm using the side of the brush here to drop the colour into the wet paint. As you can see I'm varying these strokes a little bit and it's going in and it's spreading quite nicely. I didn't want any hard edges in the distance. We want the distant trees to be nice and soft. A nice um, cool colour, soft edges so that it will give you this feeling of distance uh, into your picture. And as you can see here, I added a little bit of uh, a little bit more paint into the base there. It's working very well because everything is still wet. I don't necessarily like hard edges in the distance, so I just softened the base of the trees there with a the damp brush. The field behind the trees I mixed with a very, very light green. I use some sap green with a touch of um, a cool yellow. I wanted to get some good tonal contrasts in this picture and I think sometimes, and I really am guilty of it myself, I think we make the greens uh, too dark, too heavy in paintings and I think it works quite well if you keep them light, which is what I'm trying to do here. I think snow paintings always work so well because of the contrast you get with the landscape elements and the very light areas of snow. So that's the background done and now I'm working on this um, bank. I'm going to mix up some light colours for starters so I've got some burnt sienna here that I'm putting in. Cover the whole bank area with the burnt sienna. Vary the tones a little bit. Um, you can see I'm adding some water to it. I'm going to let this dry and then work on the trees. The reason I'm doing this is because I don't like big areas of white paper staring at me. I like to get some of the white paper covered before I tackle the other part of the picture. I have some browns mixed up for the foliage. Now the marks that I'm going to make are going to stand for the masses of twigs that are on the trees because this is a, a winter painting. We've not got a, well, I don't think we've got any green in it. Some of you would be pleased to hear. The browns that I'm using are just mixed with burnt sienna and ultramarine and I've varied the tones a little bit. 
I'm using a dry brush technique here. You can see the mixture is fairly stiff. It's not got a lot of water in it. If you think your brush is going to have too much water in it, then just get, get rid of a little bit on some scrap paper before you do the dry brush work for the trees. As I said, try and vary the tones and vary the colours on the trees. Hold the brush um, as I'm doing, sort of um, towards the end, you'll get a looser effect of the strokes on there. And keep a very light touch when you're putting the paint on the paper here for this dry brush work. Because it's damp, you can go in with some darker tones as well, as I just did there. And remember to leave some spaces, those spaces for the birds to fly through, as we always say. You don't want them to be too blocked in. I put some brush marks in the centre there to, um, to stand for maybe some foliage or a small bush that's um, in between those two trees. And I did um, mix up some darker tones just to put at the, um, sort of at the base of the foliage area there. The next stage is the rigger work. I'm using a number two or a number three rigger here, it doesn't really matter. And I'm intertwining those um, branches and twigs in between the foliage strokes. As I said at the beginning of the video, every one of these that I paint would look very different depending on where I've put the dry brush strokes and how I paint the trees. You could use a reference for painting the trees. I use photographs and sketchbook work for doing this, um, this sort of um, drawing, if you like, with the rigger. It is going to get a little bit repetitive as I put in these branches and twigs and the suggestion of maybe a little bit of fence and uh, loose branches and twigs on the riverbank there. So I will play you a little bit of music while I'm doing this.
The next stage was painting the bank and I re-wet the area just using some water. Um, you could add a bit more of the burnt sienna in there if you wanted. I'm putting a little bit of that purpley colour in. Just because it's in the background, it's nice to put a little bit in another place just to um, make the paper a bit more harmonious um, regarding the colour scheme. And I'm also dropping in some stronger burnt sienna. Everything is looking very wet into wet. It's going in quite randomly. And I've got some very dark paint mixed up with the um, burnt sienna and the ultramarine. You could add a touch of light red to that as well. And then I'm dropping these real darks into the um, into the bank as well, as you can see. So the whole thing is stain wet. So I've got some nice mixtures of colours and nice mixtures of tones in there. That's what I'm trying to do, because I don't want everything to end up looking all the same. I don't want everything to blend in and look exactly the same. I want to add some texture to this area and I'm suggesting some rocks in there by scraping away some of that paint with the, well in this case I'm using a cut up credit card. As you can see you can pull the paint, you've got to have quite a lot of paint on there in order to make this effect and it's got to be wet so this has all stayed very wet. Um, you can also use the edge of um, a spatula, um, a little bit of um, mount board, a little bit of card as well. So you can experiment with this technique. It does work very well, but again, it's one of those things that you've got to practice. Um, if you've not got enough paint on there, you can't sort of pull it along and you won't get that effect. You've got to have a nice amount of paint on there. So I think the picture was shaping up quite nicely here. I do, as you know, if you follow my channel, I do like to put a mount or these paper around it just to see how it's coming along. And if you're looking at this, you could, um, that's quite a nice composition, just the riverbank and the trees. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some of the water on here. And also, this is quite a nice tip for you. If you mask out these rocks at the base of the picture here, and then paint the water, you rub the masking fluid off, it'll give you a really nice edge for those rocks if you wanted those nice hard edges standing out against the water. The masking fluid that I'm using is the PBO which um, I've highly recommended in past videos. I still do recommend but um, it was quite interesting this time using it to find that it had darkened it had gone a bit gloopy and sticky and really wasn't going on as well as I would have liked. It had gone off. So I looked to see when I'd ordered it and I'd actually ordered it March 22. So it had done pretty well. But um, just out of interest for you to know that the masking fluid, whichever brand you're buying, it does go off. So don't blame your masking fluid if it's not working. I know lots of people say, I don't like masking fluid, it doesn't work, it's gloopy, it's horrible. Well, just look at the date that you bought it and I can highly recommend the PBO. As I said, it was March 22 when I bought it and just today it's not working very well. So I've got some more in order. For the water here, I dumped the background with very very dilute burnt sienna and made it quite wet 
with downward strokes because generally um, any reflections in the water are going to be vertical. And then using a mixture of the ultramarine and the light red, just drop that underneath the bank there and let it run down. What I was hoping was that I get some sort of lighter areas showing through so that it wasn't all purple. It's running down and I'm letting it run over the masking fluid on the rocks there. Holding the paper at an angle to encourage it to flow vertically. It's not doing too badly actually. And then underneath the bank there, because it is so wet, you can add some of the mixture, making it um, two layers there is making it a little bit darker. And then you've got to be patient, let it dry it at an angle and see what we end up with. Now while the water was still damp, I used a flat brush to pull out the ripples on the water. You want to wash the brush in water, take off most of the liquid and then drag it through the paint. Knowing the right time to actually pull out the paint is again down to practice. And I would suggest if you're not used to doing this, leave it till the shine goes off the paper and then pull out the ripples. You have to keep drying out the brush before you pull out another one because the brush is soaking up the paint. And then occasionally wash the paint out of the brush and then continue with the ripples. I used this technique in a previous video. If you'd like to check that out, there's a link in the description box below. I waited until the paint was completely dry before rubbing off the masking fluid. And fortunately, it did work very well even though it was um, on its last legs. I found that central light bit in the water there quite distracting. I don't know if it would bother anybody else, but it, it did bother me and I found my eye going to it all the time. So a very good ploy, whatever medium you're using, is to use a little bush to cover things up that you don't like. And um, that's what I did here. A little bit of dry brushwork to just suggest some foliage on the rocks there. Now here I've already added a first wash of browns to the rocks and now I'm adding some darker brown in there, similar to the way I worked the bank at the back. And then using this end of the, um, the credit card, I'm pulling out to um, just to suggest some texture in there and adding a little bit of brown back in there. I didn't want these foreground rocks to be too fussy and I didn't want them competing with the rest of the picture or to form a barrier stopping the eye going through and into the picture. So lots of techniques described and demonstrated here that you can use in your watercolour landscape paintings. Do you like the birds? I think I do. It gives the painting a bit more life and a little bit of movement, doesn't it? I should be doing some more detailed reflection work and some snow scenes in the future. So if you don't want to miss anything, do subscribe to my channel. Till then, bye for now and happy painting.